If you talk to me, I'll... Psalm take 833. Ah, All right, I'll expect. Should we see the back? I found Judy Garland's wardrobe test. Um, I found it online. I do a lot of costumes for downtown theater, and I was looking for particular kinds of costumes, and I think I was just uh, researching maybe 60s glamour or something. I don't know what I was researching, but I came across this wardrobe test that she had done for Valley of the Dolls, and I was just completely captivated by it. But there was something about this wardrobe test where she's she's so vulnerable and she's so fragile and it's clear she's trying to be affable and um, trying to be charming, but she also feels very um, just fragile. Close the camera, I'm sorry. <laughs> right here. <laughs> You pardon me, but I do get the giggles. <laughs> it's just a technical film. It's not um, for use in the in the movie. It's just to see how her clothes look lit. And so uh, she doesn't have any lines she's saying. She's not acting per se, but it's clear that she's acting. And so, I don't know, I was just completely captivated by it. And also the costumes. And also the whole idea of a wardrobe test, you know, and, 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 um, what kind of costumes that that you're trying to make to portray a specific time period, but also in the case of Valley of the Dolls to portray a, a specific kind of glamour. I'd known of Suzanne's work. I knew that she was a UT alum and she was someone that we at the Blanton wanted to work with. We were just kind of looking for the right project. And so I was at home in Philadelphia um, over a holiday break and went to the fabric workshop, which was actually my first job out of college and um, saw Suzanne's show. And I was just mesmerized by Valley. I mean, I, I loved the whole show, um, but Valley, I must have spent about half an hour in the gallery, just watching it, you know, on a loop. It's almost five minutes long. So I watched it over and over and over again um, and was just riveted and felt that it was something that our audiences would really respond to. So when I got back to the Blanton after break, I, you know, went to my fellow curators and said, you know, I found it. This is this is the video we need to work with Suzanne on. Well, I, I had a commission from the fabric workshop in Philadelphia to do a piece and kind of doing things with fabric, that's their specialty. And so they have a whole crew there that can make things for you. For example, one of the people that worked there, Kate Abercrombie, she, uh, you know, the paisley print that's on the pantsuit and uh, the one, the sequined pantsuit, and then there's one that's on the caftan, and you can't buy that anymore. So she had to hand make that. You know, she just uh, drew it by hand, and then they silk screened it on enough yardage so they'd be able to make all the costumes. It's interesting because that pantsuit with all the sequins and everything, um, when she was fired, Judy Garland took all of her costumes with her. And, um, Apparently the studio was really upset about that. Um, then I read something else that said, oh, why would they care? It's not gonna fit somebody else. But anyway, one, one account I read, they were upset about it. But then she used them in her concerts after that. And if you look at some of her final concerts, she's wearing that pantsuit. And she could still get concert work, but no one would hire her to act anymore. What we have at the Blanton is half of our downstairs special exhibition space, and it's roughly a square. So when you walk in, there will be two projections on each wall kind of surrounding you um, in a square gallery. And I think we wanted to give it, you know, its best showing yet. That meant kind of working with the space, you know, the fact that it's not a perfect square. Suzanne and I spent some time in the gallery looking at kind of evening out areas of blank wall, kind of what would create the most impact when you immediately walk into the gallery, what does your eye go to? What I wanted to do when I made the piece though is to have something that was so strong visually that you didn't have to know the background of the piece, that you didn't have to read the press release or see the wall text to just feel like um, it was almost like an incredible dance performance, 
almost like uh, an abstract dance performance in the same way you'd go see uh, modern dance or ballet or whatever. And to see these women and they're all moving in unison and they're all costumed and they're all speaking at the same time, that uh, my hope was that that would be kind of a, just a powerful performance in and of itself. And then if you're interested and you find out more about the piece uh, and you find out what they're doing and why they're doing it and who they are individually, because a lot of people, even though in my world, all these women are very famous, uh, in a lot of people's world, they're not. So um, when you find out what their background is, I think it can make the piece a lot richer. But my intention was to, to make it powerful, even if you didn't know that. Our hope is that leaving the Blanton people are always more visually attuned to the world around them and the information that they can receive visually and the, the varieties of, of lived experiences that people have. Giving people an experience in this installation, which is both kind of visual and bodily, you know, I think being in your, being in your body and having a sense of, um, of being so aware of what's going on around you, both, you know, visually and what you're hearing, um, I think is kind of a, a distinct uh, takeaway from video installations specifically, yeah. What I love about it is um, is the, the power. I think the power of the performances really comes through. Um, someone like Joan Jonas, who in, in my world is, is really a giant, um, is, is such a compelling performer, you know, and I could just watch her 24 hours a day. Or Deborah Hay, who had an exhibition at the Blanton um, several years ago, you know, as a dancer, moves completely differently. And I think what is so mesmerizing for me is kind of noticing the subtle differences between each performance and the way in which um, each performer brings her own kind of bodily and vocal inflections to this recreation, even though they're all working from the same source material, that everyone interprets it differently and through her own personality, 